Hey guys, today we're gonna carve this sailor out of just a piece of basswood using a knife. The only tool is just a knife. And this video is sponsored by Wood Carving Illustrated, which is a magazine that I have been a part of in the last few years, but I've had since I was a young kid. In fact, I'd write like journal entries like uh, uh, to be on the cover. I'm now on the cover, I've been on the cover rather, and I'm a huge fan. And they've offered a code, Carver is the code, C-A-R-V-E-R. -E and what that gets you is free uh, handouts, tips, step-by-step uh, -step articles from myself, Catherine Overcash. And it's a nice gift for subscribing using the code. If you don't have the magazine, it's one of the top magazines in the country uh, for wood carving. If not, the top magazine in the country for wood carving. Super entertaining. Uh, I always look forward to getting mine. So anyway, that said, use the code Carver in the link below to get uh, all those free goodies in addition to your subscription to the magazine. So without further ado guys, let's get into this. All right, now to start this project, we have a very simple set of tools. The first one is a pencil, just using a 2B uh, Ticonderoga pencil. I'm also using a knife. This is a uh, inch and uh, say three quarter or so. I'm trying to take a measurement in about, yeah, about an inch and a half uh, long blade. This is made, made by Badger State Blades. I really like their knives, uh, and I guess they're coming out with some full-size gouges, so I'm excited to try those as well. But um, in addition to that, I'll be using a ruler. And then of course, last and definitely not least, is the uh, piece of wood. This is a two by two by five inch long piece of basswood that I cut in half diagonally. And this ensures that I'm not wasting material. This is a uh, viewable by one side only type of a carving, and it means that we don't have to worry too much about the back side, which is really handy and makes this project a lot easier to carve. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. So the first thing I wanna do when I start this project is mark the top of the hat, and I'll do that with a uh, ruler and a pencil. So I'm going to mark an inch from the top of the piece of wood and I just picked a side. It doesn't really matter which side you call up or down. Uh, they're the same. And so I'm going to draw that line out, extend it to both sides so we can see it. And I'm going to make an incising cut or a, a V cut. And this is essentially a cut where I come at the wood from an angle like so and another angle meeting at that center point, right at that center point that we just defined at the one inch mark. Now, really quickly, you should carve with a glove. If your hand, non-dominant hand, is not wearing a glove, uh, you're likely to slash yourself, especially if you're inexperienced. Uh, please, please wear a wood carving glove and uh, keep that in mind when you're doing this. I recommend it. So, uh, that being said, I'm going to continue to make that kind of V-channel cut as I move around that one-inch line that I made here, just kind of going across the whole thing and gradually widening a little bit as I go about uh, the V-cutting process. All right. Now, before I get too much further, I think it'd be nice just to trim up the sides here. I don't want it to be digging into my hands too much and it makes just things a lot easier and more comfortable to hold on to. So let's do that. Okay, so now that we've done that, I'm gonna start by thinking about the outline. Now, I know I made this notch for the hat, and that's what this is, by the way. This is a notch for the hat. It's where the brim of the hat means the kind of main section of the top part. But I, again, I talked about outline, and to begin with that, I wanna create a hat top that is not perfectly straight across, right? Because a lot of these guys, they're old, craggled, you know, craggy-faced, men who have been out in, the, in this open sea for many, many days, and their hats are just not pristine. 
you're not looking at a hat that would be totally even all the way across. And so I want to make sure and communicate that by using my knife to kind of start to take material away from one side a little bit more heavily than the other. And we're also just kind of getting the overall curve of the top of the hat. It will have kind of a round curve to it, okay? So I'm gonna start by taking small chunks. One of the temptation here is to take too much material off at once. Another good thing to have nearby is a leather strop. I'm gonna go grab mine really quick, be right back. Okay, here's my leather strop. And the reason I bring this up is because when you're whittling, it's especially nice when you're just using one tool to be able to maintain your blade if you start to see little white lines trailing behind your cut marks. And that's, that's usually an indication that you need to be stropping. And to do that, I'm using a leather strop that's dressed with a honing compound called ZAM, Z-A-M. By that, I mean I'm just rubbing it onto this piece of leather. You don't have to have anything fancy. Any piece of leather that's fairly smooth will do. Okay, let's see if that's better. I started having some lines show up on my cuts. Yeah, better. So you can see I'm just taking off the corners. Okay, rounding that top. Once I've done that, I'm gonna take a concave a cut out of each side of the top of the hat down into this, what will soon be the side of the face. Don't worry too much about that. Just uh, do as I say here. <laughs> so about, I'm gonna say, oh gosh, close to about a couple of an inches down from the top of this piece, I'm gonna start by uh, curving to that bottom point. So it's, this is not a science and I'm not measuring it because you know if you make this a little longer or shorter, it's not a huge deal. The point is I'm just gonna start to narrow the top of the hat and to uh, create a little bit of space for the hair and you'll see. So I'm just coming in with a scoop cut. Now this involves turning. As I'm pushing the blade through the wood, notice that my hand is actually turning. My wrist is turning like so, right? And that's gonna allow me to get that scoop cut. I'll meet it on the other side to get that to come out. And just like that, we're starting to create this little indentation for the hat. Okay, nice. Now once we've done that, I'm going to uh, take some material away from the top of the hat and start to round the overall shape of the hat brim. Or not the brim, but the actual top of the hat. Just like so. And I'm going around and I'm actually extending the cap uh, brim, this kind of initial one inch cut that we made, in such a way to where it kind of turns downward. So. In other words, I'm gonna use my pencil and kind of turn the hat down like so. And that's because the hat is gonna be sitting up and forward on his head. I'm also gonna to start to take some material from the top of the head and from this back angle to kind of get an upward turning angle at the top. I want this angle to sort of match the angle I'm about to create as I start from that two inch mark and turn downward. Again with a V cut, so I'm making an angle cut like so, and then I'm meeting that angle the opposite way and chipping out again along the path of that knife mark, or a pencil mark rather. Okay, if you're feeling like, you know, Alec, you're a little clumsy with that knife. Uh, you're totally right. Um, that kind of leads me to uh, a point. I am not a professional whittler. I am not a knife-only type person. I am a hand carver. I use gouges mostly. And this is a really neat way for um, people to start out into the realm of carving, right? This is kind of like the way that most people, including myself, 
get into carving. And so it is important to learn these techniques, but for somebody like me who carves for a living, I'm actually carving mostly slightly larger things than this and in a relief style where I'm using gouges, knives, chisels, and so I'm not typically holding the piece of wood when I'm carving. So if you notice any clumsiness, that's merited. That's, that's real. That's what's happening. I am not uh, that familiar. I'm not that great at using just knives and holding the material. But there are some things that I can tell you from a few years of experience in carving are very important for your safety. The first one is never carve toward your hand without supporting it. Okay, so what this means is when you're moving the knife towards your hands like so, notice that my thumb is being supported by my other thumb, my non-dominant thumb, the one without the knife. I'm always trying to counterbalance my left and right hand so that if I miss, I have a stop here. There's always this kind of relationship between the left and right hand in that way. like a standing a little proud and a little bit too even. So you can see I'm just angling that like so. Very good. Take again a little bit more off of the top of this hat just to shorten it up. It looks a little bit long. So the reality is here, as I'm moving my think my knife through the blade, if it chips out like it does, my thumb should never be in the path of the blade, otherwise I'm gonna get myself cut. So I always try and keep my thumb out of the path of the knife if I'm making big kind of, you know, honking cuts off of the wood. Okay. But then again, uh, if you're wearing a glove, uh, you're a little, you're, you're way, way, not a little, you're way better off uh, and, and way safer. And so definitely encourage that. I've said it so many times in almost every video, but I just, I do think it's important. I mean, you're saving yourself all kinds of time trips to the ER. This is a fairly hard piece of basswood actually. And that makes it a little bit harder to, you know, shape, but it also makes it better at holding some of the details. So I'm not complaining at all. Okay. Just going back over with V cuts along that line that we created. Again, really emphasizing the V cut, trying to cut on both sides here of the V, like so. Point, I want to start to think about the brim of the cap and to create the brim of the cap I'm going to uh, create a line with my pencil that kind of runs parallel to this existing line that we've drawn here but just lower so I'm going to draw it out just like so and you know I guess it's not really totally parallel but it's uh, kind of curving in, in the same way but slightly more like the brim of a baseball cap Just like that. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. Then I'm going to carve the wood to kind of fit that shape. Kind of this uh, bottom area here. Oh, excuse me as my camera moves. Let's see if that's better. Okay. All right. 
right, so I'm going to create a stop cut at that line that we drew and just work that stop cut all the way along that pencil line. So this is the difference between a stop cut and a V cut. <clears throat> a V cut is more of a straight line, I'm sorry, a stop cut is more of a straight line in, right? So I'm going straight in the wood and then I'm coming up at an angle to relieve the material. So instead of coming at two equal angles, I'm creating a straight inch angle and then one relief angle. Just working my way around, making my way around town. All right. And then I'm going to create a uh, brim of the hat. It comes underneath here like so. About, uh, say, a quarter of an inch or so beneath my V groove, my initial V groove. And make a stop cut here. And then cut to that stop cut. Okay. Just like that. See? And the same thing on this side. About a quarter of an inch or so from the V cut coming down. Maybe a little less than that. I don't know. Not, not rocket science here. You can kind of be in your own world, make your own hat. That's kind of the joy of this stuff, right? In the way that you just get to decide what type of a hat this man has. Okay, all right, so we've got that shaped up. I'm going to round the brim of the hat a little bit more. And uh, you can already start to see how the hat is taking it's taking shape, and that's really kind of fun. All right, you don't have to worry too much about it being perfect just yet. In fact, it probably won't ever be perfect, but that's okay. Now I'm going to take the uh, top of the hat. I, I keep working this down, but I want it to have that kind of upward turn. So I'm going to take a little bit more out of this back area like so. This is a Michigan basswood, so it's, it's definitely a lot harder than the basswood that you'd get from down south. And it kind of varies from tree to tree. But this northern stuff, it's definitely a lot harder and a little bit slower to carve. But, you know, it's worth it in the end. It's a really nice, hard, beautiful uh, basswood. Nice to carve. Nice, nice, nice uh, material to work with. I do recommend it. Although, if you're a beginner, you might want to order some from one of the more southern... Uh, wood suppliers, the basswood from those are generally going to be a little bit easier to work. Really taking taking that back. Okay, nice. Very good. Okay, it's at this point, I'm gonna measure about a half an inch uh, from the, um, oh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna say uh, about three quarters of an inch uh, from the top of the brim, or from, sorry, from that V to the, uh, what will be the brow line. Okay, so three quarters of an inch from the V cut that we made initially, this first cut that we made during this project three quarters of an inch down. So really what we're saying here is about a quarter of an inch down from the brim of the hat. That might be easier to remember. We'll just say that. I'm just extending that line over. And really this line will actually also kind of follow a downward turn, sort of like this top line here in this groove. Okay, so I'm gonna start by making a cut in that Uh, pencil mark, another V cut. Okay, so this is that V cut. We're matching angles here. And uh, what that means is to match angles, you've really got to take a lot more out of this 
area here, right? Below the, the line that we've just drawn. Just like so. Okay, so I'm coming all the way across here, slightly turning downward. Okay, see how that's shaping up? All right, now I'm going to actually take some material uh, in between these two cuts. So I'll make another stop cut at the brim of the hat and just take, uh, oh gosh, maybe an eighth of an inch out, just like so. See that, how that's looking? Okay, just making that nice deep cut underneath the brim of the hat. We want to create that shadow. We want the hat to appear to come over top his head. And we also want that forehead to have some nice dimension, nice structure to it. So we can recut that channel that we made in uh, just a few seconds ago. That quarter inch from the brim down, the downward turning line. And I'm really kind of making three cuts here. There's the main cut, that is uh, the first V cut that we made. I'm turning my tool to about a 45 degree angle. I'm making another cut, V cut here, and the same thing here, another V cut at about a 45 degree angle, just like so. Okay, and ensuring that those angles are good, it's gonna make for a much more dimensional and uh, sort of realistic face, which is exactly exactly what we're after here. So, all right, now I'm going to uh, define the sides of the face. And the sides of the face tend to be about a little over an inch uh, from temple to temple. I'm gonna say about an inch, oh, about an inch and an eighth, okay? So let's just divide this in half. And uh, if I, would it be, uh, gosh, what is that, 9 sixteenths, right? So we can do that like so. A mark at 9 16 it's going to give us our center line. Let's see if I did that right. Eh, maybe I could have shifted it over a little bit. Let's try it. Move that line. There we go. Okay. <laughs> math. Homeschool math, right? Uh, I am a homeschool boy. Okay, so... We've got that inch and an eighth mark there, and I'm actually gonna come alongside that uh, mark by just kind of going straight. I'm actually, I say go alongside it, but really I'm going straight in, and then I'm relieving that cut, just like so, and I'm creating a chunk that's coming out, and that establishes the center, or the, the sides of the forehead. Okay, just like so. And you know, it's actually better to angle this slightly outward. I got a little excited and started angling it inward, but giving this a slight angle outward, this cut here, is gonna ensure you have a little bit of extra forehead as you're progressing through the project. Okay, just like that, all right? Okay, so next, I'm actually gonna define the bottom of the nose. And that's gonna be about, um, say, three quarters of an inch from that brow ridge. So I'm gonna take the the uh, brow ridge and uh, make a, a mark below that. Actually, let's let's double check that. Let's make sure that's right. It seems a little bit, my measurements seem a little bit funky here. I think that might be three quarters from a different spot. Let's measure that again. Okay, from the brim of the hat, it's three quarters. That's what I meant. So that's from the bridge of the hat. You're going three quarters down. Okay, so I'm going to make a V-shaped cut. Now this is not the same as uh, the V cut I was talking about earlier here. This is a uh, profile of a V. So I'm actually gonna draw a V on this uh, line that we drew here, just like so. Right? Not perfect, but you get the idea. Looks more like a U. You'll see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna make a cut in, going straight in along that line, and then in the other direction. You're just going straight in, like that. And I'm gonna relieve, come to that stop cut. So this is gonna help us with the shape of the nose. So that V. All 
Now I don't want to go too deep here because actually the mustache is going to live right underneath this V. Very cool. Okay, now it's at this point, I actually want to create a V cut. Now this is something that if you've followed my videos before, if we've got a bearded character, this is a pretty common scenario for me. Also, really good idea to look at the side view and notice, look at all that depth we have for the bridge of the eyebrow or the uh, ridge of the eyebrow and then the nose underneath, right? You can see how those shapes are starting to come together. Very exciting. So anyway, as I was saying, we're going to carve a V line here. It's going to start um, coming from the corner of that stop cut that we just made on the nose and it's going to end up about, I'm going to say a quarter of an inch down and then up again, meeting uh, somewhere near the stop cut area, a little bit past it in this case. So I'm going to try to replicate the same thing. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, but uh, actually one thing I'm noticing is I want this to be a little bit closer in. I drew that line out a little bit too far. So really it's kind of in line with the inch and an eighth gap here between the temples. It's kind of just a little bit wider than that because the cheeks tend to be slightly wider than the temples. Okay, so that's what it looks like from the side. All right, and I'm gonna start with a stop cut alongside it, just like so, and then a relief cut. Stop cut and relief cut. Okay. That's what that looks like from the side. I'll come to the other side and do the same thing. And again, another V cut along the the other side of the V. So we've got that V shape cut. It's a V cut making a V cut. <laughs> so it's a V cut along the lines that's in the shape of a V, right? There's the V shape. We can clean these cuts up a little. They're looking a little bit messy. There's that, looking good. Okay, so now, speaking of the overall outline of the face, in the same way that we kind of established the hat and the overall shape there, we're gonna to start to think about the overall shape of the body, or the body of the beard, and then his actual torso, maybe just part of the shirt collar. And uh, yeah, you can see that my ADD is kicking in and I'm looking at the whole thing and I'm deciding that this also still needs to come down, still yet, even a little bit more, a little bit more, uh, so that it's not quite so tall. That's a little better right there. Okay, anyway, as I was saying. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a little bit of uh, character in the, um, character in the, uh, beard and hair. So I'm going to take a little bit of a cut on one side, a scoop cut, a shallow scoop cut this time, not as deep as this one was, and I'm going to use that to kind of start to bring in the shape of the beard and the hair. So I'm going to do that to this side, and on this side I'm going to go with a positive shape. Right now in design you want to have as much movement in your piece as possible, not necessarily as much, but you want to work in at least some movement, and to create movement we've got to have concave and convex surfaces. So I've got a concave surface here, and I'm going to round this surface out over here to get a little bit more of that kind of cool movement. Right now, as far as the body is concerned, typically it's kind of kind of hard to say um, from my experience because I'm not an experienced uh, bust carver as far as the uh, shoulders down goes. But from my experience, that uh, typically the shoulders start just about where the chin 
uh, begins, something like that. You guys can correct me out there if that's wrong. So we're going to try and indicate here a little bit of a shoulder type situation because we've got plenty of material. So anyway, that being said, I'm also going to make a cut, no, I'll say about an inch and a half down from the bottom of the nose to establish the beard. So I'm going to draw that from the bottom of the nose, an inch and a half. And yeah, I probably should use a pencil, but I'm just getting ahead of myself and marking it with the uh, knife. Okay, that's going to be the bottom of the beard. Yeah, once again, this is a really hard piece of basswood, but uh, it's, it's still nice to carve, just a little bit harder than, than usual. Okay, so I'm just kind of coming around the base of the beard, and we can draw a circle. Not a, more of an oval shape to kind of indicate where the beard wraps around. Okay, like that. Again, I'm going to use the knife to kind of outline the beard. And the important thing about the beard is it's not perfectly straight across. It's it's, it's not perfectly round either. It's got character and uh, especially an old sailor is going to have some indentations and little things that we'll add in just a moment to really just make it super interesting to look at because the, the big fear that I have when I make a carving is making it look too stiff, too straight, too boring. I've made the mistake way too many times to keep doing it and, uh, and yeah, I still occasionally do it. So trying to keep this interesting by creating movement and giving him some weathered beard character, right? Lots of little indentations and such. Notice the line that I'm creating here along the beard is not totally straight across. And that can add some, again, character, whatever fancy artsy fartsy term you want to use. But as long as you're getting that in, that's great. Okay, so now that we've got the general outline here, I do want to start to think a little bit about the definition of the nostril flares. Now the nostril flares tend to be in this scale are going to be about, well, I'm going to say, let's see, let's take a measurement and check. Maybe like, uh, let's say three eighths of an inch or so, maybe a little less, but we'll mark it at about three eighths of an inch. You can reestablish that center line. And you can see those two little lines we drew. Those lines just are at the base of the nose for a good reason. We don't want to carve way up into the uh, into the the sockets of the brow ridge. Uh, we want to excuse me as I move my camera. We want to make sure and get a nice um, short little cut in here. So like so, going straight in along that line, not very far up. So there it is. That's how far in. And then a triangle cut. So I'm making a cut following the angle of this V that we made earlier, this line. So going straight up until that little chunk starts to come out. And we can free it by coming in from underneath. And this is a pyramid cut, okay? So that means it's a three-sided cut. So come in alongside here. And we can turn it sideways and keep following that range of the V, like so. And then we're going to come in and relieve that chunk. And that is a pyramid cut. And that's going to create, yeah, you can already see that, part of the nostril flare. Isn't that cool? OK, this is a little bit of a tricky cut. And uh, it's important that you learn to do this. And it's a real good test of how sharp your tools are. It's a scoop cut. We've had a couple of these scoop cuts along the side here as we've kind of come along and defined the overall outline of the beard and hat. But in this case, we're going to use it to create a little bit of soft transition between the bridge of the nose right here and the cheek. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take the tool and we're going to scoop slightly in between. So taking that transition from the bridge of the nose to the cheek area, just like so. All right, just like that. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here. And we'll use this a little bit more in a, in a few minutes. So you'll get to see that. But watch as I come in. And scoop. All right.
Okay, so um, I want to, I'm really tempted to start to define some of the shapes in the shirt, but just to keep it simple and to remind us of where things are going to be, right at this beard line, I'm gonna create another triangle cut or pyramid cut, just like the one that we made in the inside corner of the eyes, but this time a little bit more um, large. <laughs> so let's do that. So I'm gonna come in right below here. I can draw it first so you can see where we're at. actually kind of hard to see. I'm going to switch to a marker because again it's a little bit tough to see the uh, the pencil on the... <laughs> My drawing skills are awesome aren't they? They're not, they're not, they're good enough right? Okay so come in here, turn it upside down, angle, angle, and then a stop cut underneath the beard, and right out it comes. Okay, we're gonna repeat that, get a little bit deeper, increase the angle there. Just like so, and see how we're defining that shirt collar? What will be soon the shirt collar. This is going to be a really, really fun whittle, guys. I'm excited to uh, see the shape of it as it comes to, comes to life. But anyway, uh, back to the hair. Let's to, let's talk about hair for just a couple of minutes, and uh, I want to create a little separation between the hair and the beard. So I, again, I talked about this before. We don't want straight lines too stiff. We want it to have character, just like this line of the beard is not totally straight across. It has curve and move into it. Look at all that curve, right guys? That's what we're after here. So this hairline is gonna come in, out, and then back in and out. So we're gonna try to create that kind of S shape and we're gonna do the same thing on this side. We've already got a little bit of that going on here, but we're gonna separate the hair from the beard. And we're gonna make a fairly shallow cut alongside the lines that we just drew. and we're gonna make a relief cut to those lines, just like so, all right? That's the idea. And the same thing here. And again, the reason I don't want it to be too deep is I don't wanna to take too much away from the side profile of this beard. I want it to look pretty full, and I may have gotten a little carried away with that cut here as well. I wanna keep that nice, big, bushy beard, and so I'm actually gonna try and Bring that beard line out a little bit more. See how it angles like so? Outward instead of inward. Same thing here. I'm gonna taper the beard to that V line. So when it sort of slowly kind of tapers out. Okay. See where we're at here? Cleaning up these lines a bit. Okay, all right, now, uh, the next thing I wanna do is create an established area for the mustache, and to do that, I'm gonna create a V cut, an upside down V underneath the, the nose, about, uh, let's say, a little bit less than a quarter of an, you know, maybe, goodness, let's see, where, where are we at? Let's just take a little measurement. You know, probably 3 16 and this is a soft V, in other words, it's kind of an open kind of a V. It's not a real tight one, so you can see uh, it's creating bars of the mustache. Just like so, right? Isn't that cool? You can already start to see how that's coming to be. Ah, look at that. We had two things happen there. We had a little bit of a break and a little bit of a... Uh, a chip out, so a break on the knife blade and a chip out on the mustache. Uh, so what that means is we're gonna need to uh, either reprofile the back of our blade, and actually, it's kind of a good little lesson here because this happens sometimes to me, and you know, and sometimes a blade that's tempered uh, really hard, like this one is, it's gonna have a little bit more of a tendency to chip, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna s actually sand the back to create a shorter blade, just like that, right? That's the easiest route here. 
because I don't actually have to change anything about the, the, the sharp part of the blade. I just have to taper the back of it uh, in such a way. But I'm going to use a different knife for now. Uh, but uh, yeah, be careful of when you're coming back into a blade. If you've chipped the blade in, it's uh, you want to make sure and get that little fragment. There's a little fragment because that can dull your tool. Anyway. All right, so I did fix my blade and I wanted to show you what that looked like really quickly. Uh, you can see here that basically what I did is I just went, like I said, ground the back side of the blade to reprofile the knife and did a little polishing on the front just to make sure everything was good. Now we still have this break. I wanted to just briefly show you how I would fix that because uh, man, breaks happen, right? And so might as well just uh, fix her up here. So I put just a tiny little drop of super glue in there let that sit, let that soak in, and I'll push it shut. You don't want to use too much glue. You might have used too much. Then I'm going to use an accelerant. I'm not sure how to pronounce this. I'm pretty sure I was saying it wrong, but um, Mitropel or Midropel or something like that. I'll link these products in the description for you guys who want to buy it. I'm not sponsored or anything by them. I just I like their products. It's pretty cheap and it's good quality stuff. It's viscous enough to where it, you know does a good job of holding up uh, the pieces in place, all that. So, okay, that's right. All right, we're in good shape now. I'm gonna use my knife to uh, extend the bars of the mustache over, just like so. And just go back over the mid face, or the, sorry, the, the, smi the frown line, or smile line rather, uh, also called the nasolabial Nasal labial fold or crease. Okay. Cool. I'm going to take some of the blockiness out of the beard, take that hard edge off. When you're carving the beard, you want to think about shapes first, big shapes, and you don't want it to be too flat. And a big problem that I see folks doing when they're, or a, a mistake that they're making is they're, again, leaving everything so perfectly straight and you want to try and get some texture in the beard. So I'm going to come in with some shallow V cuts and start to get some little details going in there. Just like so. Get all the saw marks out as well. And now I'm going to break up the edge. I don't want that edge to be, again, too uniform. So I'm going to come up with some V cuts into the beard, to the sides of the beard, make it look rough, textured, wild. You know, this guy isn't using his beard oil, you know, it's, it's all matted and old and salty. <laughs> so, insert ad for like grooming device. <laughs> if your beard is untamed, use ma- I won't even say the name of a brand, give them free advertisement. Okay. And I'm going back in again and reestablishing the sides of the nostril, just a little shortcut right on either side of the nostril, just like that. Boom. And then boom. Oh, oh, fidgety hands. There it is. A little triangle there and there. Isn't that fun? Look at the shape that's coming together already from this. Super, super fun. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is start to detail the bridge of the nose. And this is kind of a scoop cut. I'm going to use my knife to come behind the ball. And the ball is this little circle right at the tip of the nose, right? I mean, most people know what the ball is, right? Right here. And I'm going to come on either side and above that ball and just start to narrow the bridge of the nose. Just like so. And do the other side. And just round the tip.
Next, I want to separate the ball from the nostril flare. So from that profile, the nostril flares should be further into the face than the ball. So I'm going to set that forehead back just a little bit. Those three planes, I don't know um, if that's clear, but the, the idea is to have three planes on the forehead, right? So we've got the front plane, and then we've got the two side planes. So reestablishing that. Okay, and once again, deepening the, not the nose by taking a little scoop out of the sides, sides of the nose, right? Just like that, burp, little scoop. So practice these little scooping motions where I'm, see I'm turning the handle. Stop cut underneath the nose. How about that? Look at that. Isn't that fun? Getting the nose shape in there. And we can turn a little, we can take a little line, just a little V cut, just on top of the nose of the nostril to create that little, see that? Little nostril. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I mean, just because your your hands are the thing making it doesn't mean you can't be excited about it. So, I mean, this is fun. It's so fun uh, to see how simple some of these cuts are, and how much uh, when you know where to place them, and you do know now you know where to place them, uh, what they can do to your carvings. All right, so this is a really fun step uh, to carve eyes, or a series of steps actually. So. The first thing I'm going to do is start in with a V cut. All right. Now, uh, this is not necessarily a V channel like we've been carving, like for instance, up here at the top of the brim of the hat, like earlier, you know, the soft V cut. This is a V shape, kind of like we did a V here, boom, and then boom, right? And we're going to do the little narrow V right in the inside corner of the eye. So we're going to come in straight like so, up top like so, and then take our knife, look at the angle that I'm coming at here, and just popping that sucker out, a little chunk, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. Then we'll go back over it and make it a little deeper. You wanna try and make the left and right little Vs similar, but don't worry about making them exactly the same. They're like kissing cousins, not twins, right? It's at least it's, <laughs> at least it's really hard to make them twins. I mean, the closer you get to that, obviously it's good. But, okay, I'm gonna go back over it once again. Really emphasizing the little inside corner, taking a pyramid cut, right, like we were doing earlier, out of that inside corner. And the same thing over here, pyramid cut. How about that? Okay, can you see what we're starting to do here? All right, now I'm going to use a stop cut underneath the eye, right? So I'm going at just about an eighth of an inch beneath the, br the brow ridge with a straight cut in. Actually, it's slightly angled upward. I want to be really specific here and overly detailed. Now look at the upward angle I've got. So it's not straight in. It's actually tilted upward. And then I'm making a relief cut beneath that. I take a little chunk out. All right, and the same thing on this side, and I'll slow it down so you can see it. Ready? Stop cut. And then relief cut. Stop cut. And then relief cut. Okay, we're just going underneath the eye. Let me bring that up a little higher. And a little higher yet. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now I'm going to connect this line to the outside corner of the eye like so. So I just took this knife and went straight in, connecting a line from this bottom cut we just made to the outside corner. And then another relief cut. Again, what we're doing here is we're getting this little mound, which will be <laughs> the eye, of course, right? So same thing over here. Guys, look at that. Isn't that cool? OK. 
Okay, so I'm gonna narrow the forehead a little bit. It's a little bit wide. And to do that, I'm gonna come on either side of the forehead with the, at the temples. Make a little stop cut there. Yeah, we could have placed the hat a little lower on his head. It's a windy day out there. You can hear the fence blowing around out there. Maybe you can't, I can. Okay, just a little bit narrower, just like that. Okay, now I'm going to take a little groove uh, out of the inside corner transition between the nose and the eye, kind of like we did earlier, but this time just a little bit deeper. So notice as I'm moving the knife through, I'm scooping the knife upward, right? Try that again. Beautiful. So I'm going with the tip of the knife, I'm going into that corner of that pyramid cut that we made on the inside corner of the eyes. Same thing here. Ready? I'll try to get a little closer. Turn it up. Boom. Okay. And one more time. Same thing on this side. Cool, huh? Kind of fun. All right. Now I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to take an angle off the top of this brow. Just a little bit. I'm kind of flattening or softening that angle. Just like so. A little bit of a groove. Beautiful. All right. Look at that profile. Look how nice that profile is shaping up. just above the beard line here. Beautiful. Just like that. Take some of the flat areas out of the hair as well. So I'm doing some scooping cuts, just like that. Guys, you can take this a lot further than I can in this kind of shortish video. I mean, it's becoming a longer video, but really you could spend just hours and hours refining this. And you know, adding detail, you could paint the hat, you could paint the um, the beard white. In fact, you know, we'll, I don't know if we'll do that. Probably won't do that in this project. But there's just so many ways that you can um, make this thing come to life. Painting the eyes, I mean, just so on and so forth. And uh, I hope that you experiment with this and you enjoy the experiment and that you share those experiments with me uh, on. You can post it to whatever Facebook and tag me. I'm on there. Or uh, if you're on Instagram, you could tag me on there. I'd love to see what you guys are making if you do end up making this project. So this makes a really kind of fun little gift, something you can make in a short period of time and give it to someone that you love. And take a little bit of a scoop cut out the top of the forehead, right above the eye, just like that at about a 45 degree angle. Again, parallel with the, the planes of the forehead here, and these side planes here and here. Little scoop. And then a little scoop on the top plane as well. Just creating that brow ridge, just like so. Okay. Come in, narrow the temples a little bit more. Nice. Guys, I really hope that uh, these projects, you take them slow. You don't rush like I do with these uh, because these are really, as far as whittles go, these are some of the harder um, whittles. You know, really you're learning a lot about realistic proportions when you're doing some of these faces, even though, you know, these are not totally, re these are not totally realistic. You're still getting a base for a lot of the more um, intense stuff that we're doing, for instance, on the online school, uh, which is 
uh, link below. Um, that's a, you know, basically a, a take on realism, a much more in-depth version of kind of what we're doing here, talking about all the principles, how we derive the measurements, and how you can um, take photos and, and carve people from references and all that stuff. I mean, that's um, what this is kind of setting up for, in a sense, is some of those more advanced techniques, if you'd like to do those, but some of you just are content with a knife and a piece of wood, and for that, I just, I do not blame you. It's so fun and simple, and you can kind of take it anywhere with you. You don't have to have a fancy shop. You could just you could do it in an apartment. You can do it in a in a garage, really. Do it anywhere. And I know people that do it, whittle in their cars. Um, you know, when they're waiting for their wives or husbands in the grocery store. I mean, I get it. I don't want to. I don't want to sit in Target for an hour and a half, right? So I'm just coming around, cleaning up the edges around the top of the hat and here. Just with V cuts, just trying to make sure those little crooks and crannies are cleaned up. We don't want tons of little fuzzes and little bits in the in the crevices. It just makes the carving look sloppy. So try and take a little extra time and clean up those uh, transitions. Oh, you can hear my stomach talking. All right, we're going to do a real quick design here on the hat. I'm going to come just above the... Uh, or just below rather, that the initial V cut that we made, make a little stop cut. So a stop cut and a relief cut following just, I mean, barely, barely below, excuse me, the, the groove that we created there with that V. Just creating this little design, right? That's all we're after. See that? Beautiful. I'm going to clean it up a bit as well. All right. We got that design up top. Very cool. All right. I'm going to clean up just on the inside corner of this triangle, blend the brow ridge in a little bit with the eyes. All right, now there's different ways we can go about carving the eyes themselves. We could close his eyes, we can leave them open. Um, in this case, I'm going to uh, start by establishing the upper lid. And this is a little bit challenging, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start across the top with a line that starts up at the up, upper corner, up in this corner of the triangle here, and then goes down, not pressing with a lot of pressure. And then a light stop cut up to that point. Not a lot of material removed, just a little bit, and that's what I mean by a light stop cut. Just like that, see? And the same thing over here, I'm going to make a stop cut that goes from the inside corner and it comes down here, like so. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but underneath the eyelid and kind of reversed. So it's going to be the lower eyelid. So I'm going to come in with a U this time. I guess it's really not the same thing. It's more of a U shape, right? A little bit of a U. Very subtle, though. Not a ton of material coming out here. And then I'm going to come down to that line. So I'm just opening a little bit of a slit. And that little slit is the opening of the eye, okay? And, and he's been, you know, out trying not to get water in his eyes, so he's squinting. See that? And we'll come to the other side, do the same thing. So again, I'll try to show you as clearly as I can. Let's see if I can get a little closer. Okay, I'm gonna start with a V, with a cut, like so. Light pressure, try not to put too much pressure. And then down to that point. 
No, get in the corners. Now, if I had plenty of time, I would be cleaning this up a bit, really coming underneath the eyelid and deepening cuts beneath it to make give him bags under his eyes. We can do a little bit of that, but I don't have a ton of time, so I'm going to simplify it. And look at that. The eyes are starting to come through. Isn't that wild? Isn't that fun? Yeah, sure, it's a little bit chippy here and there, but we're not too upset. Now I'm going to take the forehead ever so slightly back. It's a little bit too proud, a little bit too thick, heavy. So I'm going to pay, paying attention once again to those planes that we talked about, those three angles, one, two, and three, those three angles, really paying attention to those when we're reducing the forehead or shaping it. How about that? How about that? Okay. Now we could go in with a V tool and start to really think about um, like details like hair and all that for the eyebrows, say, you know, the veining details in the hair. If you have a V tool, I, I sometimes just use the knife though, again, just to keep it simple, you can actually use the knife to create little V cuts, especially paying attention to deeper V cuts at the edges, at the edges of the beard and hair, okay? Just like so. And you wanna make these, this V cuts that ultimately they're making kind of upside down V cuts in, uh, spaced apart inconsistently. So notice I've got two close to one another and then one further away. The, the tendency is going to be, you'll notice this in yourself, is to make the cuts so perfectly spaced, one then equidistant from the next, and that's just not how hair tends to lie. Okay, so I'm just doing, doing some textures, some deeper, some shallower cuts. Vary the depths and the widths of your V cuts in the hair. like that. Okay. See how it's starting to look more and more like hair? Okay. Beautiful. We can create some shallow cuts here along the beard as well to give it some movement and some character. Along the mustache here to make that mustache stand out away from the beard a little bit. Just like that. And we want to cut all of those saw marks out of the beard as well. All right, now let's deal with the, the shirt collar. Okay, so to do the shirt collar, I want to have the, uh, let's see, um, let's see on a collar, how does that go? The uh, right side is overlapping the left side, right? Yep, that should be right. Okay. Okay, so his right side is going to be here. Or, sorry, this side, right? So that means we're going to overlap this side. Just like so. <laughs> Took me a second, huh? Sometimes I have to pull out a, sh a shirt to remember. <laughs> Remember how things are shaped. So I'm coming in and uh, making a stop cut right along the center, and then I'm cutting the his uh, left side underneath his right side. And I'm going to take the point 
there's a little bit too much of a point here on both sides. So I'm going to take that down a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with the scooping cut with a uh, curved cut, kind of straight in. Look at the blade in relationship to the, uh, to the carving. It's slightly tilted up, but not a ton. And, and I'm going to come in with that U. And I really want to be careful here. This is where it's good to wear a glove. Coming in with a scoop cut and then a relief cut. Notice how we're creating that collar. Nice little collar. Tuck that part in. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. As soon as I connect the collar, I'm going to take another cut along here. Make little cuts. Don't get too aggressive with trying to remove too much at once. You'll end up cutting yourself and messing up the carving. And I get carried away this way too. I mean, you probably have seen it on this project. Sometimes when I'm filming stuff, it's hard not to rush, right? Okay, so I'm going to do the other side here. A little stop cut and then a relief cut up to it, just like that, okay? And then don't be afraid to do that curve cut like so. That one takes a little practice. You might want to practice making curved cuts, curved cuts, um, stop cuts rather, on your uh, scrap pieces of wood that are mounted to a bench just to protect your hands. Because this could be a little bit difficult, especially for those of you who aren't used to knife handling skills. So, you know, give, give yourself a break if you're really struggling with some of these curved cuts. And just be patient with yourself. The bottom line is though, they really work. They really work to do all kinds of beautiful details when you learn how to handle the knife. You don't need that many other tools to do really beautiful wood carving. Okay, now I'm gonna take the shirt back a little bit. Okay, I'm taking the shirt down. And then I'm gonna cut in the collar. Back in with that collar. And come up in with a little undercut underneath the collar there. Come in with a stop cut. Okay. side of that collar. Cleaning up some of those stop cuts where you went in a little deep. Okay. Now as far as finishing goes, if you want to use a, a, a clear coat that's water-based, it's safer indoors, it's a lot easier to use a uh, clear coat that's um, water-based than an oil-based one. And you know, I personally would just go with a spray or a brush on polyurethane. Minwax makes a good one. I linked the spray in the description, should be in the description still. And uh, I recommend that because, you know, again, I don't get paid by Minwax to mention their name. I just, it's just a cheap brand that seems to be widely available, at least in the States. I'm not sure where you guys are necessarily watching this, but um, in the United States, it's uh, pretty common. All right, guys, this is coming to a close. Um, huh, the irony, I'm carving clothes. I'm carve off any of these uh, saw marks on there. 
just like that. And you can carve wrinkles in the shirt. I mean, you could just absolutely get carried away with this little guy. You could carve him into a bust. In other words, take the angles of the, of the bottom off, you know, to kind of make him look a little bit more presentable, just like that. Make him look like a little bust. They sit that way he can, he can sit on a little pedestal. <laughs> it's a tiny little art piece. Just like that. So many ways that you can approach uh, finishing this carving, and I'm just going to clean him up a little bit and uh, call that a wrap. This gives you at least the starting point, some great ideas for how to get into a project like this, how to structure the face. Um, I do, I mean, again, it's just, it's really kind of hard not to get carried away with a project like this and just add details and paint. And I think it's a wonderful little project uh, for you to give to somebody that you love or even a child or somebody in your life who uh, likes sailors or uh, maybe was a sailor of some kind. Do a few details on the hair as well. Easy to get carried away with that, so I'm not gonna. I'm not going to. <laughs> Just a few, few cuts here and there. Carve off those pencil lines. few more lines here in the hair. Upside down V's, you can right side up V's where you leave some material standing away. That's what I did there. guys once again uh, if you'd like to learn to carve uh, realistic faces uh, in a lot more detail than this kind of step up from these projects these widow projects check out the online school there's a whole host of uh, you know 50 plus projects on there I had a new uh, project at least two every month and uh, there's lots of stuff beginner intermediate and advanced gouge stuff all that and uh, yeah be sure to check out uh, Woodcarving Illustrated in the magazine link below. Uh, it's a fantastic magazine. I recommend it. Uh, I've been a fan of that magazine, a contributor for that magazine for uh, many years. And uh, so if you're interested in this, uh, then definitely check that out. All right, guys, that's it. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>